Hey, Jerusalem Pro Team, this is Michael Evans, and I'm so glad that we can join together today and share a word together. It's a little bit different from what we've normally been doing. You know, most of the days of the week, I am coming together with you. We're coming together together, and we are praying together. But I'd love on Sundays for us to have a word, that I can share a word of encouragement. And my goal is that it would be something that blesses you, that feeds you, that equips you, empowers you. And so please tune in today. Join us today. Tell us where you're from in the comments below. Tell us how maybe this message has blessed you. Give us a digital amen today, as I like to say, by liking this video. But truly, I want you to know this. I am so thankful for you. I'm so glad that we can share this experience together and we can do this together. You know, the last couple of years have been really hard for a lot of people and it's been a very strange season. It's been a very contentious season in a lot of ways, but I believe that it can also be a season where we as believers draw closer to one another in unity, in agreement, and that's powerful. And so stand with me today as I share this word with you, if you would. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. And Lord, like I always pray before I preach anywhere, give me the words to say and the ability to say them. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to share a little bit uh, with you before I get started on the message uh, as a whole about myself, and that is that I have had the unique experience of belonging to a family that has prayed for the peace of Jerusalem for a long time. We have the Jerusalem Prayer Team, which is a ministry devoted to praying for the peace of Jerusalem, and the Friends of Zion, which is our center in Jerusalem, where we educate, we inspire, we minister to the people of Israel, uh, we help house Holocaust survivors and displaced people, we feed the poor, and at the Friends of Zion Museum, we tell the story of the ancient children of Israel connecting the dots all the way to the modern day state of Israel and those Christians that have stood alongside them. You know, there's been a lot of anti-Semitism committed by professing Christians. And so we've come into the heart of Jerusalem to say, no, real Christians love people. Real Christians love the Jewish people. We were inspired by the story of the Ten Booms. You, you've probably heard of them before. The Ten Boom family from Harlem, Holland, from the Netherlands. They had a hundred year prayer meeting where they prayed for the Jewish people. Just imagine that for a moment. For a hundred years before the Holocaust, our ministry bought the Ten Boom home and started the Jerusalem prayer team in order to continue that 100-year prayer meeting. When COVID hit, we turned to prayer and we posted daily live prayer videos on Facebook. It's been my, my joy to, ho to host those with you and to pray with you, praying for people's protection, for their provision, for their peace, for their healing, for their prayer requests, so many more things. And we've seen people have their lives changed by prayer. We've prayed together for the peace of Jerusalem. Why? Because prayer is powerful, but even more so when you don't pray alone. When you pray together, prayer is powerful. A lot of us know about how powerful prayer can be. There's two things that stand out for believers when they pray. It is the provision that God gives us. God will provide for you even in a miraculous way. And as you, you pray, you begin to, to realize that. Not just 
calming the storms around you, but calming you, giving you strength, preparing you. Prayer is powerful. God's provision is powerful. But also God's presence in prayer is powerful. It's transformative. God's presence is transformative for you. God answers your prayers, but not always in the way that you expect. Those are the two most well-known, I'd say, P words, right? For prayer, the power of prayer. But I would love to share three simple lessons that I've learned about the power of prayer over the last two years. These are three other P words. It's nice how that worked out. Other than the provision and presence of God that have changed my life personally. And they've changed the way that I pray. First off, the power of proximity. Not just the presence, but being close to. You know, I'm a father and my children I love them, but I don't want to just uh, be in the room. And, and that, will, that will change their lives, won't it? My kids, bless them, they're great children, but they act differently if I've been out of town for a while than they do when I'm home in the room with them. There's just something about the presence of a father. It's very important. But also important is that proximity, what I would call that closeness. I don't want to just be in the room with them. I want to know them closely. And I want them to know me. I want to hear them. And I want them to know that they're heard. 1 John 5.14 says this, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Not just being in God's present, presence corporately, but drawing close to Him, approaching Him. Being heard being known. Why would the Bible highlight God hearing us? Of course God hears us. He knows everything about you already. He knows every hair on your head. He knows every thought in your mind. He knows every desire of your heart. He knows your heart better than you know your heart. Why would the Word of God highlight us being heard by Him? Because there's power in being heard, being known, being in relationship. Adam walked with God in the cool of the evening. Enoch walked with God so much that God took him. There is amazing power in not just getting your request and getting the answer to your prayer, but in being heard. Not just physical hearing, but understanding and not being heard can bring tremendous sadness and pain in your life, can it? Have you ever had a, a situation in your life where you felt like you weren't heard? You're talking to somebody, you're sharing with them, but it's like you're talking to a brick wall. The act of talking doesn't release you. It doesn't unburden you of anything because you're not heard, because you're not understood. Sometimes you need to say something, you need to ask something, you need to be heard. And God hears you today. Think about that for a minute. Your prayer, not just of uh, uh, being a means of getting a desire of your heart, but being an act of unburdening yourself of what's troubled you. You may not even know that it's bothering you. I've discovered this with my kids. And I put it into practice. 
I go on a walk with them many nights of the week. Uh, we go on, the walk, on a walk in the evening together, and I've got four young children, and I take them individually, just them and dad and the dog, and we go uh, a mile or two, walk around some ponds or through the woods together, down a trail together or a sidewalk. And I let them talk the whole time. I don't talk so much. I might interject a little bit of fatherly wisdom here or there. But 95% of the time, at least, I keep my mouth shut and I just listen. My four-year-old tells me about bugs, her favorite bugs. My seven-year-old talks to me about video games. I have no idea what he's talking about most of the time. My oldest girl, she tells me about her love for animals and what type of dog, new dog that she'd like to get. My oldest shares with me his adventures at school with his classmates and I just listen. There is something powerful about being there and just listening as they talk and as that time wears on, as we walk together in proximity together, a closeness starts to form as they just talk to me and eventually something almost inevitably unravels for them and they get serious. And they start to, to ask me questions, maybe about something that has concerned them at school or, or, or a fear that they have an insecurity, a problem. Maybe they didn't even know it was bothering them. You know, my four-year-old, this amazed me. I was walking with my four-year-old and about 40 minutes into the walk, maybe, she looks at me and not fussing, not whining, trying to be tough with her lip quivering. She goes, do you and mommy like kids? What do you mean, baby? I heard you say that you weren't going to have any more kids. Does that mean you don't like kids? <sighs> no, baby. Of course we love our kids. You're all huge blessings in our life, the biggest blessings in our life that we have. God has blessed us with you. We love you so much. That's not what mommy and daddy meant. She had overheard a conversation that me and my wife had had and had taken it to heart that maybe that meant that we didn't like kids and maybe that meant that we didn't like her. You may be burdened with something in your heart, with something in your spirit that you need to release. You need to get out. You need to be heard. You may not even know it, it's, that it's there. But we have a promise from God that he'll hear us. You just have to be in proximity with him. You just have to be walking with him. And he'll hear you. He'll bring to the surface and release you, unburden you of what's troubled your heart. Point two. The second point of our message today. The power of promise. Promise or legacy has an amazing power. An amazing power. You know, I, I, I was raised in Texas, and there's a football team in Texas that never loses. They are the most, I believe, winningest football team in history. They never lose. They always win the championship. Always. There is a legacy of winning. So much so that they've made movies and TV shows inspired by the, the, this, you know, uh, West Texas high school football team. Legacy is powerful. It's much harder 
to get something new started than it is to be a part of a legacy. Promise, legacy is powerful. Romans eleven seventeen. If some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot had been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root. The history and the legacy of what God has done in and through the lives of the children of Israel is the very foundation of our faith. Did you know we have a legacy of prayer that you can be a part of? What happens if you view the Word of God not just as as something that is true, but abstract, but is something that's true history to which you are a continuation of? The things that you pray for and the way that you pray changes. You are a part of a legacy. You are a part of a promise. I'll tell you what happens. You start praying for Jerusalem. Why? Because it's no longer an abstract metaphor. It's a city on a hill. It's a place where God met earth. It's the place of Calvary. It's the stones that Jesus walked on. There's a much bigger story than just yours and mine. There's a story that's much bigger than us. A greater story of God's work on the earth into which we are a part of. You start praying for the Jewish people because they're the ancient children of Israel. The people, not of a metaphorical promise, but of a very real promise. And God's promises are true yesterday, today, and forever. A promise that you can pray because you're grafted in. There are a ton of promises in the Bible for the children of Israel promises that we can pray because we're grafted into that tree. You know, something special happened to me when I first went to Israel as a child. The Bible was an animated feature in my brain. The the characters were two-dimensional, so to say, until this point. I believed the word. I loved the word. I I read the Bible regularly. Uh, You know, I had read it through cover to cover multiple times before I was a, a teenager even. I loved God so much, and I do, still do. But when I thought of the characters in the Bible, they weren't real people in my mind. But when I went to Israel for the first time, when I saw the Valley of Armageddon, when I walked the the southern steps of the temple where Jesus was, when I sat down there and prayed, when I worshiped God at the Wailing Wall, the people of the Bible took on flesh in my mind and I realized that they were no different from the people of today. The Bible has already been written, but the story of God's people is still being written today, and you are a part of it. God's promises are true. Yesterday, today, and forever. You have a history of prayer that you can embrace. There's a great picture that you're a part of. And you can say, you did it for them, Lord. Do it again for me. Point three. The third, I'd say, lesser known power of prayer. The power of purpose. 
Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. God's ways are are larger than ours. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God's ways are so much higher than ours. Many times he's working in ways, he's moving in ways in your life that you can't even understand. I think that hindsight even can only show us certain areas where God has worked for us. Someday, God willing, in heaven we will have a a complete image of what he's done in our lives, how he's worked in and through us. In fact, the, the Bible tells us, that God the Holy Spirit will help us pray sometimes because we don't know what to pray for as we ought to. I think that because of this, because of how how much higher God's ways are, how much greater His understanding is than ours, I mean, think of the gap between those things. I think because of the ways that the Holy Spirit will lead us in prayer. You can be pregnant with prayer, if you allow me to use that term. You can be pregnant with prayer. What do I mean by that? You know, I've, I've got a lot of kids. I love my babies. And I loved Every time my wife was pregnant, there was something so special about waiting for that child, about uh, just uh, waiting to see what God had done there. You know, I could see the, I could see the belly. I could see the the, the child growing because of of my wife's stomach. I, I could, I could maybe hear the heartbeat or see an ultrasound or feel the baby kick. But I didn't know what that baby looked like yet. I was waiting. I was expecting. I was waiting expectantly for a blessing. For extraordinary blessing. I can't see it yet. I can't hold it yet. But I know it's there. It's a mystery to me. I don't know what that baby's going to look like but I know it's a gift from God. You can be pregnant with prayer for a long time, but don't grow tired of being good. God's ways are higher than our ways. You know, the Timbooms prayed for a hundred years. Think about that. Multiple generations praying for the Jewish people. And those prayers might have seemed strange to those around them in their community. But when the Nazis came knocking, it all made sense. Your prayers have a purpose. The Timboom family came together and they saved numerous Jewish lives, building a secret room to hide the Jews in and to eventually smuggle them out of the country. They were confronted by the Nazis and told to stop. But Caspar Timboom, the patriarch uh, of the family, the grand old man of Harlem, looked at those Nazis and said, it would be an honor to give my life for God's chosen people. And he did. He did give his life. You might not see it yet, but your prayer has purpose. It's not fruitless. You're not spinning your wheels. It's growing in you, and it's waiting for delivery. I don't know how you've been praying. But I do know that many of you have felt alone and burdened by being unheard and misunderstood. 
have felt disconnected from God's promises and his word and hopeless in your future, have felt frustrated by your perceived lack of impact or purpose. But that's not where you have to stay. God hears you when you draw close to him in proximity with him. He has a legacy promise going back thousands of years to which you are a part of. He has a purpose for your prayers, even when you can't see the end result just yet. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the power of prayer. Even the less obvious power of prayer, God. Lord, I pray that all of us today would step into a new transformative season of prayer with you. Lord, that we would draw close to you, that we would walk with you, that that closeness, that proximity would unburden us, God of the things that we've been holding on to. Lord, I thank you for the promise that you have made us be a part of. Let us be a part of. God, I pray that we would embrace your promises. You've made us part of the most winningest team in history. Let us embrace your promises today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for the purpose of your prayers. We may not always understand it. Your ways are so much higher than our ways. God, we may pray for a hundred years not knowing why. But you do, Lord. And you have a purpose for all of our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Jerusalem Prayer Team, thank you for listening with with me today. Thank you for letting me share this word to you. And I just pray that it's an encouragement to you. I pray that it's a blessing to you today. I love you guys. I'm thankful for you. And do me a huge favor, if you would, today. Share this video. If it's going to be a blessing to somebody else in your life, share it with them. Give us a little digital amen today by liking this video as well. And go ahead and share your prayer requests with us. We're not doing the extended time of prayer today. Um, We'll go back into that tomorrow though, so don't worry. But we want to stand with you and we want to pray with you. I love you guys. God bless you and thank you. Bye-bye.